And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Ali. Ali. Hello and welcome. We are live on air. Hello, hello. Let me know how my sound is, guys. Welcome. Thank you for joining in. I hope that my sound is loud and clear. Let me say hello to our beloved audience in the live chat. Sandra, hello. Carolina, James, Linda, Magnus, Peter DeWall, Walter, Andre Kingman, David Rye, our beloved admins, Elkis, Fragolidis, 303, Nana, Bruno, James or James, Karen, Karen. Man, there are many people. That's that's nice, guys. Thank you so much for your support. We already have almost 100 people watching and I didn't even start yet. I love you so much, guys. I really thank you for the amazing support. Let me say also hi to Christian Christ, my beloved shepherd, Stratcat Blue, Nana No No, Samir Khan, Ramos, TJ65, Bearcat, Carrie Ann, how are you, sister? Hope you're doing okay. Bewitched Prophet of Islam. Oh, there, are, there are many people, guys. Sorry if I cannot mention all of your names. Bear with me. God bless you. God bless your loved ones. Thank you for joining in, guys. <clears throat> Some people maybe just came from our dear brother, Christian Prince's live stream so make sure that you have something to drink so we can continue here so guys let us do this let us do this our topic of today do you have free will in islam as a muslim do you have free will in islam as a muslim i hope there will be muslims who might answer or can answer this question hopefully there are muslims guys i really i really hope so if there are muslims guys and i'm talking to the admins especially to the admins if there are muslims let us know maybe they have the courage and the and the knowledge to call us live on air let me open up my skype too let's see my Skype is open, and but I want to ask to the audience who are listening, if you are a Christian, please don't call me yet, okay? You know, maybe we now know the basic rules of uh, our live streams. Only Muslims can call us during the live stream, but when we are done teaching, we will also give Christians the opportunity to call us too, all right? Before we actually start, I want to ask you to... Pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, bless our beloved audience and subscribers. Lord, please bless this stream so it can be healthy. And I want to thank you, Lord, for your ultimate grace. And we believe that your son, Jesus, is truly risen. And risen is he indeed. Al-Masih qam 
haqqan qam. That's what we say in the Arabic as speaking Christians, Arabic speaking Christians. Lord, thank you for your ultimate gift. Thank you for your grace that saved us from death. And thank you for my lovely audience and subscribers who kept supporting us day in, day out for the last months. Please bless them and their loved ones. God, keep all of us healthy and safe, especially from the spread of this Corona virus. I meant to say the Corona virus. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you so that you can direct our words, thoughts and actions. Give us a measure of your th strength so that we might not give in to discouragement, any taqiyya, any makr of Allah, the Satan, any deception, Lord, any lies or any doubt. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us, including the Muslims who might be in need and are seeking for the truth. Please, Lord, open the Muslim eyes so they also can be saved like we are saved through the blood of our Holy Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth without any error or any shame. And please give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome everybody. We are live for air. Today we'll have the opportunity to investigate if there is free will in Islam. Do Muslims have actually free will in Islam? Anything that we can find will be used against Muhammad, the so-called prophet of Islam, in the court of law. So I hope that Allah will be his bodyguard and will represent him today in today's hearing. I hope Allah, the attorney of Muhammad, will be there to defend his self-proclaimed prophet in the court of law. Hopefully we will have also Muslims. My Skype is open. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. If the admins could provide the Skype ID in the live chat. As we mentioned earlier, for now only Muslims can call us through during the live show, all right? In the end, we'll see if there are no Muslims, we will also allow Christians to call. So if you're a Christian, you have to wait. You cannot call us right now, all right? You know, guys, my voice is still not really 100% because we have done a lot of live shows, long live shows lately. So sometimes, you know, you're so passionate about your work, about your full-time ministry as I am but you forget to also take care of your health. And I'm really a busy guy, as you know. Also in my personal life, I do a lot of research. I do a lot of investigation. Um, I have a family to take care of, but that will not hold us back to do what we do. So I want to thank everybody who just joined. Please share the link with our friends, invite our friends. Share the link on social media and tell them that we are live, please. Do we have any Muslim yet? Is there any Muslim yet? I hope there are Muslims. Else, the admins will highlight my name so I know that there are Muslims. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Do you have free will as a Muslim in Islam? That's the one million dollar question. Is there any free will in Islam, according to the Muslim sources? Hello, Sola Scriptura. Welcome. Welcome to the people who just joined. If we go to the Quran, guys, if we go to the Quran, we can find, we can find the following. And we sent not an apostle but with the speech of his people that he might expound unto them. So according to the ayah, Allah sent to every nation 
a prophet who can speak the language of his people. So every nation got his own prophet. I wonder where the prophet of the Indonesians are because those are not Arabs, right? You know, I, don't, I, I still, you know, guys, I really don't understand when I read such an ayah. According to Allah, he sent a prophet to, you know, to East Asia. He sent a, a prophet to maybe to the Japanese, to the Chinese. What are the names of those prophets? Who are those prophets? I mean, if you are a Muslim, you don't know Arabic and you live in, let's say, in Japan or China or maybe in Indonesia. Clearly, Allah sent you your own prophet. So Muhammad, according to this ayah, Muhammad is not your prophet. Muslims who live in uh, Indonesia. Please tell me this is a contradiction so we can laugh. Yeah, and Allah, exactly, Kerry, and Allah sent 124,000 prophets. What are their names? What is their message? To who did Allah send them? 124,000 prophets? Wow, that's a huge number. Right? But if we continue, it says, then Allah send it astray whomsoever he will and guide it whomsoever he will and is the mighty the wise wait 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 question muslims so allah if he decides if he likes he will even misguide also muslims he will send astray muslims right so let's say you you have been doing ramadan all your life you have paying zakat as a Muslim. You pray it five times a day. Right? You said your shaha, you took your shahada, you did all of that. But suddenly, someday Allah decides to take away the faith from your heart and you become an apostate. What is then the good deeds for? Why did you pray five times a day if Allah, for some reason, decides to take you out of Islam? I mean, Allah, you know, everything is in the hands of Allah, right? According to the Muslims. So what free will, what shish kebab, what falafel? Muslims. Where's the free will? If Allah can decide for you one day to take you out of Islam. Right? Any Muslim? I think they are still feasting. I mean fasting, right? Feasting like... Uh, it's the last day in their life. You know, have you ever seen guys? Have you ever seen how Muslims attack when it's you know when they when it's iftar? They call it iftar, right? When they can eat, finally eat, and they start to eat. My friend, even sorry to say, I'm not trying to insult any animal, but if have you seen pigs eat? Muslims when they do iftar, when they they are allowed to eat, they you know you want you you don't want to you know you don't want to see that. To be honest with you guys. They start to fight over the food. Bro, they stop, they stuff their faces with so much food, it's unbelievable. Do you have any idea how many people, you know, let's say you want to fast, guys. Let's say one day you decide to do fasting as a Christian. Are you going to stuff your face? Couple hours later, are you going to stuff your face with food? Or are you, you know, I mean, fasting is fasting, it's not feasting. You're gonna sleep all day long, and then you wake up and you're going to eat like an animal. And I'm not trying to insult any real animals, guys, to be honest with you. Yeah, and, and no wonder, yeah, exactly, God ate the Quran. No wonder that they get fat during Ramadan. Bro, the amount of food that they eat during Ramadan is crazy. And they call it fasting. Can you imagine? That's fasting. People get fa fat during fasting, which they call Ramadan. Can you imagine? People who do not have sugar disease will get sugar disease during the Ramadan. I kid you not. C because they eat so much, it's unbelievable. You know, what you eat for, let's say, one day they eat for three days, right? They eat that the amount of food that they eat, they eat it for three days. So you, the, the amount of food that Muslims eat, if you would have eaten it as a Christian, you, you don't need to eat for three days, man. 
and they call it uh, fasting. <laughs> yeah. Any Muslim who can tell us and try to refute us that there is no free will in Islam. In Islam guys, you are nothing but a slave to Allah. Allah is the slave master. You as a Muslim, you are nothing but a slave and Allah created Muslims. You know, he didn't create them to share his love with them. No, no. Allah created Muslims to only have them as slaves. And that's the only connection. That's the only connection between Allah and the Muslims. Allah, the slave master and the Muslims, the slaves. That's it. Right. According to Islam, Allah does not need you. You need him. Allah does not want to share anything with you, not love. He only created you so you can worship Him, right? Five times a day. That's it. And if it was not for Muhammad, you, uh, Muslims had to pray 50 times a day. Five, zero, 50 times, right? Yeah, the funny story between Muhammad and Moses. <laughs> Go back, go back. Maybe Allah can take five prayers of the 50 prayers. Yeah, and uh, he keeps sending him back and forth, back and forth, from 50 all the way to five, right? Most funny story that I have read in the Muslim sources, to be honest. You know, Moses was sending, uh, you know, Muhammad, you know, like his messenger. He was basically the messenger. Go, go ask Allah. Maybe Allah can do something for you in your ummah, brother. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Someone says, yo Rob, God bless you my brother. God bless you too my friend, appreciate it. God bless your families. But we know that Muhammad and his Allah are nothing but the Antichrist. Allah is Satan, the Antichrist and Muhammad is the agent of Satan, right? And if we go to the Bible, if we go to John 8 verse 44, we can read, you Satan, you are of your father the devil right if you are an agent of satan like muhammad you are of your father the devil muhammad you muhammad are of your father the devil allah the devil allah and your will is to do your father's desires muhammad right he was a murderer satan was a murderer i mean allah was a murderer from the very beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him when he lies, he speak out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of all lies. And we know that Muhammad's Allah, he is the best of all deceivers. He is the father of all lies, right? Allah, the best of all deceivers, brother. Allahu khayrul makarim, right? As the Quran says. Wa makar, wa makar Allahu, Allahu khayrul makarim, brother. Allah is the best of deceivers, and his name is the deceiver. The Maker, right? Al Maker. That's his name. He's that's one of the 99 names, right, guys? The Deceiver. Uh, it seems that Allah fits the description here in John 8, verse 44. Very well, brother. Do you have any Muhammadan? Guys, you really need to share the link, guys. Share. If you know Muslims, if you are on Discord or something, you need to share the link that we are live, guys. If you are on Muslim servers or whatnot, maybe they have the courage and the knowledge to come and debate us live on air. Maybe there is an Ustaz or an Imam who, who is not afraid, <clears throat> I mean, to lose face during Ramadan. Imagine if you are an Imam, all right? And you put your business on the line when you are going to debate someone like Rob Christian or maybe David Wood or Christian Prince. What will happen to your business if you lose face? I mean, you have a nice BMW 5 like that Ustaz. Uh, what, what did he call it again? Surah al Kofi? Surah al Kofi, yeah. Surah al Kofi, brother. I hope that Imam, Imam uh, Insan, on what he calls himself, I hope he will not lose his job, you know? Maybe he has children or whatnot, you know? 
Well, I actually do. I do hope that he will lose his job. You know, if there are truthful Indonesian Muslims who watch the spanking that Christian Prince gave him, I mean, you should you should put him on the street, man. Take away his BMW 5, right? Model 5, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you a BMW model number 5. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Let us see, guys, if there's truly free will in Islam. Let us go through some Sahih, Sahih Hadith, brother. Sahih, Sahih. Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, Adam and Moses argued with each, with each other. Moses said to Adam, now watch guys, this is a conversation between Moses and Adam. I have no idea how Adam and Moses met, but anyway, Christians let it go, right? This, this on itself is a funny story, but you know, it's Sahih Hadith, right? Sahih Hadith, brother. Oh, Adam, Moses is saying, you are our father who disappointed us. So Moses is, is attacking Adam. You, Adam, disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. Walter, thank you for your donation, my friend. God bless you. God bless your loved ones. And thank you for your support through donation. Then Adam sent to him, Adam said to Moses, now Adam is going to answer to Moses, Oh Moses, Allah favored you with his talk. So Allah, according to Adam, you know, Allah talked directly to Moses. I wonder why Allah did not talk directly to Muhammad. It seems that Moses is much a bigger prophet in Islam than Muhammad. I mean, if Muhammad, as the Muslims claim, he's the leader of all the prophets, why did Allah send Jibreel to squeeze him? You know, Allah, could you not squeeze Muhammad in that cave? Huh? Why did you send Jibreel to squeeze that poor Muhammad inside the cave, brother? Iqra, Iqra, ma ana bi qari, qari, inside that cave. It's a cave, right, guys? So we have to do echo. Iqra, Iqra, let me squeeze you. Ma ana bi qari, qari, qari. I cannot read, read, read. I tell you to read or else I'm going to squeeze you, brother. Choke you. Bro, I cannot bear it anymore. Stop. I'm going to die, man. Stop squeezing me, man. I'm not I'm not some vegetable or something. There's no juice in me. You want to squeeze the juice out of me, man? Take it easy, bro. <laughs> anyway, so it seems that Moses is much important than Muhammad in Islam because Allah talked directly to Moses, as you see. And he wrote the Torah for you, Moses, with his own hand. So then Adam, look guys, the answer from Adam. This is, by the way, Muslims who are going to say, no, no, this is not from the mouth of Muhammad. No, this is the prophet of Islam, brother, speaking. The Muhammad is talking about, uh, mentioning this story between Adam and Moses. So Muhammad is the one talking, okay? You know, don't say, Rob Christian, you're lying. I challenge you to, see, to show me where I'm lying. So Adam says to, you know, Adam says to Moses, 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 Adam is saying, do you blame me for action which Allah had written in my faith 40 years before my creation, brother? So Adam refuted Moses, confuted Moses, Adam refuted Moses, confuted Moses. The prophet added repeating the statement three times, you know. Muhammad suffered from uh, you know, mental disorder, brother, right? This guy has, has to say and do things three times. Every time he needs to repeat himself or do the same act three times. Clearly Muhammad was not, you know, you know Muhammad was must, messed up, man. So as you see, Adam had no say, Adam had no say for the sin that he committed in the Garden of Eden, because Allah, as you see, Allah is the one who has written this sin, this fate, this sin. And as you see, Muhammad actually believes in original sin, right? Because it says, because of you we are kicked, right? We are Because of you we are kicked out of uh, paradise. You see it? You disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. Because of you, Adam. So clearly Muhammad believed in the original sin. 
And Muslims dare to say there is nothing called original sin. You hypocrites. Ya munafiq, son of a munafiq. Your own prophet is mentioning the original sin here. Takbir, Allahu Akbar, brother. Original sin, brother. Yes, you see the original sin is just confirmed by Muhammad in this ayah. Do you see it? So Adam, <laughs> you know, who, who won the argument? Adam, do you see it? And Muhammad needed to repeat it three times. Do you see Muhammad added repeating the statement three times? Right? So where's the free will for Adam in Islam? Where is the free will for Adam in Islam? Can someone show me the free will? So guys, in other words, let us sum it up. Muhammad believes in the original sin. And <laughs> Muhammad confirms that Adam, right, confirms that Adam has no free will. He had no say. Because Allah is the one who wrote this faith on, on Adam. Don't blame Adam. I mean, you see, Adam won the argument from Moses. Where's the free will, guys? If Adam himself had no free will, where's the free will for you? Brother? Where's the free will in Islam? If Allah can decide to write something on your faith, even if it might hurt you and all of your offsprings. I mean, we are the offsprings of Adam, right? And Moses, as you see on top, Moses is saying, because of you, Adam, you are our father who disappointed us. Do you see it? You, Adam, disappointed us, Moses is saying, according to Muhammad, and turned us out of paradise. So guys, confirmation. Original sin, confirmed by Muhammad, and there is no free will for Adam. Adam had nothing to say. And it, this sin was put on him for 40 years before his creation, brother. Right? <sighs> we will go there, uh, my friend, we will go there. We will go there. Gu guys, please, you have to, don't, don't spoil my teaching. We will go and we will mention everything. Don't worry, guys, we are not done yet. I hope that there will be a Muslim who will stand up and debate me today because this is a very important topic right guys because this counts for everybody in Islam where is your free will or are you actually agreeing with us that Allah is the puppet master and you are nothing but a puppet in his hands where what free will Muslims what free will if you dare if you dare to say yes we do have free will in Islam call me and try to feud me right Huh? Guys, uh, I really want to address all of your questions in the live chat, but I cannot teach and answer questions. And I see a lot of off topic questions. I really want to address all of your questions, but I cannot teach and uh, answer your questions in the live chat, okay? If you have any questions, you have to wait and we will try to answer your questions in the end, right? Please let me focus on my topic. I have a very important topic today. Let me finish my topic and we will open up the lines for the Christians if there are no Muslims who, who dare to call us. And we will also try to address a couple of questions in the live chat. I know, I can, you guys, I cannot thank you enough because without you, we cannot do this. Last time we had over 240 people watching our live stream, right? I want to thank God and I want to thank our audience who are supporting us. And we really try our best, guys, you know, but I cannot split myself into half, right? I cannot answer your questions and teach at the same time. So you have to bear with me, all right? So guys, Muhammad confirms the original sin and Muhammad confirms that Adam has no free will. Adam had nothing to say. Adam had nothing to do with his faith because Allah wrote the sin on, on Adam. Allah wrote the sin on Adam before his creation, 40 years before his creation. Now guys, I want to play a video clip for you. 
I want to play a video clip for you that is on topic and we will go from there, okay? Put your headsets on. You need to put your headsets on, guys. And we will... <clears throat> We'll play the video, which is on topic, from a Muslima who became, sorry, from a lady who became a Muslima, all right? Her name is Samantha G. Boyle. She has a lot of subscribers on YouTube, you know, and Muslims, uh, you know, I mean, she's she's a, she's looking good, right? She's a white lady. You know, Muslims love white people because, you know, Muhammad was very white. Even his armpits were white. So when you have a white person, you know, and you look nice, Muslims will idolize you. And she has thousands and thousands of subscribers. She loves to talk about Islam and about her hijab. Nine out of ten videos that she makes is about her hijab. She's so proud she's, she's wearing hijab. And let me play a video for you and we will go from there. Okay, guys? Let's see if we can find the video. Uh, okay. All right. I was going through some videos on YouTube and I came across a video of a lady called Samantha J. Boyle. She is a convert to Islam. And I watched a couple other videos of her and I came to the conclusion that she became a Muslima for one reason and one reason only. She fell in love with her Muslim friend. And she decided to become a Muslima so she can marry her Muslim friend in the future. So she said the Shahada and accepted Islam without any knowledge, without any information about what Islam is. How can you become a Muslim without speaking the language? Right? Because if we go to any Muslim translation, all the translations for the original Quran in Arabic are nothing but lies and deception. And we proved that in previous videos over and over. For example, Sahih International, which is the most often used translation for the Quran in English, written by three women. But we know that Muhammad said that women in Islam are half-brained. So how do Muslims who do not speak Arabic or understand Arabic, how do they put their salvation on the line and trust three women who are half-brained, according to the Prophet of Islam? And how did this lady that you see here in front of you how did she become a muslima without knowing that her prophet called her half-brained you are a half-brained you are deficient in your brains according to the prophet of islam i don't think she knows about this hadith which is a sahih hadith so let us play the clip guys and see, and see and decide for yourself what kind of puppet you are in the hands of Allah that Allah one day he can decide to remove the deen to remove the faith out of your heart as a Muslim you have no free will in Islam let us watch the video guys and more than anything I do fear one day becoming a non-Muslim one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes Iman from my heart and I am a kafir. I fear that so much. I so she fears that Allah decides to remove the faith in Islam from her heart. For some reason, Allah can do that. And you become a kafir and you will burn in hell, which they call Jahannam. For eternity burning for eternity because Allah is the one who is deciding for her to become a non-muslim what kind of sick disgusting religion is this that Allah is using Muslims like a toy in his hand playing with their minds playing with their hearts 
bringing them into Islam and removing them out of Islam. Right? And we can also prove this from Islamic sources. Let us. So, guys, she, this lady, fears, and I quote, she said, I fear that Allah someday might remove the Iman, which is faith in Islam, from my heart. That's what she said. Her name is Samantha G. Boyle, the lady that you just heard talking. She is a Muslim convert. And I'm sure, I'm sure that she became a Muslim for the right reasons, right? Miss, uh, Miss Samantha G. Boyle? Right? I'm sure you have your good reasons why you become a Muslim, right? Clearly, it did, you didn't become a Muslim because you fell in love with your um, Muslim boyfriend. And if he wants to, you know, marry you, you have to become a Muslim huh? so he can marry you. So he can uh, <clears throat> do nikah with you. Right, uh, Samantha? The fear in Islam. The fear in Islam for every Muslim. I mean, if I was a Muslim, guys, I kid you not. If I was a Muslim and I will read the ayah where it says that Allah will guide or even misguide anyone, including the Muslims, I would, you know, have to look 10 times over my shoulder if maybe Allah is there and he's going to remove, <laughs> maybe he will send Jibreel to remove the Iman from my heart, brother. I fear that Allah someday might remove the Iman from my heart. Wow! Why do you need to, to fast? Why do you need to do Ramadan? I mean, why do you need to do good deeds? Uh, why do you need to pray five times a day? If Allah, for some reason, someday might even remove the Iman from the heart of the best Muslims, brother. Huh? Huh? Someday, brother, Allah will use you as a puppet in his hands, Allah the puppet master, and he can decide for Samantha G. Boyle, this wonderful lady here, <clears throat> who has no clue what Islam is all about, right? She does not know the language. Did, did they actually tell her, guys, here's the one million dollar question. Did they actually tell her when this lady became a Muslim for the right reasons, did they tell her when one day she decides to remove the Imam from her heart and leave Islam, she become an apostate that even her husband, her Muslim husband now, that he will cut off her head, he is allowed to cut off her head if she leaves Islam? Did they tell her that? I mean, maybe one day Allah, Allah is the one, because of Allah, she will become an apostate, she will leave Islam. Did they tell her that, guys? Do you think did they, they told her that when she took her shahada, brother? Yeah, they won't tell her that. Exactly, Tamara. This reminds me, guys, of a very uh, nice story that I once heard. There was an African man, guys, there was an African man. And you had Muslim apologists who went to Africa and they told him, they told this African man, listen, if you take your shahada, brother, and you become a Muslim, we will give you a lot of gold. We will give you four women, brother. And you, you're going to be, you know, a very nice Muslim. And, uh, you know, you have to, you, but you have to pray five times a day and you have to pay zakat and whatnot. He said, wonderful, why not? I mean, free money, brother, easy money, you know, and you will get four women, four wives. Of course, this, this guy, yes, why not? You know, this guy is poor and... So, you know, he's enjoying his life as a Muslim. You know, he's a Muslim for 10 years. And then the money is gone. Poof, the money is gone. I mean, this guy, you know, he has four women. It's, you know, life is not cheap. Four women, a lot of children. Then the money is gone. Suddenly the wives also leave him. One after another, all the four wives are gone too. And this guy, this African poor guy, he goes to these Muslim apologists. He tells them, hey, um, I don't want to be a Muslim anymore. They told him, oh, but we forgot to tell you, if you leave Islam, if you leave Islam, we will chop off your head. Wow. 
We will chop off your head, brother. We forgot to tell you that, but that's what happens to you if you leave Islam. I'm sure she knows about that. <laughs> Lot of mercy. Lot of mercy, guys. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Brother, mercy, mercy. Yeah, mercy. Lot of mercy. Yeah, you know, you know, you must be nuts to you must be nuts to become a Muslim in 2020. To be honest with you, you must be crazy to become a Muslim in 2020. If you know this cult, if one day you decide to leave this cult, they are allowed to chop off your head if you don't repent in three days, right? You don't come back to Islam. They are even your parents are allowed to kill you. Even, you know, your friends, your best friends that you were hanging with, your Muslim buddies, are, then are allowed to kill you, brother. Right? What about another hadith from Sahih Muslim? Sahih Muslim, hadith number 2748b. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Let me give you the link, guys. I want to mention this hadith with you too and prove to you there is nothing called free will. What free will, man? Look, Abu Ayyub Ansari reported that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the, in the meantime, Allah is still praying on Muhammad. When we ask Muslims to who Allah pray, Allahu Alam. I mean, when I pray, I pray to God. But when Allah pray to who Allah is praying, is he praying to himself? Is he praying to another Allah? Is he praying to Muhammad? Allahu A'lam, brother. Allah knows best. Allah knows best, brother. That's the best question, best answer that they can give us. Guys, thank you for the donation. King Rich says, I pity her ignorance. She has been deceived. Yes, for sure she has been deceived. By the master of deception, Allah. Allah, Al-Makr, yes, the deceiver. And his grooming gangs of Abduls. Exactly. The army of thugs. Exactly. Poor lady. She thinks she, you know, she become a Muslim. You know, maybe she fell in love with her Muslim friend, you know, and he deceived her. He deceived himself too. Because, I mean, what's what? Give me one good reason why you want to be a Muslim in 2020. Just go, give me one good reason. We're not, I'm not asking you for 10 good reasons. Give me one good reason why you would need to be a Muslim in 2020. Just one. We have 322 22 people watching. Wow, another record, guys. And the numbers are growing. Thank you, thank you, Lord. God is good. Thank you, my loved audience. Thank you so much, guys. Without you guys, we cannot do this, right? And I'm not doing this for myself. Guys, uh, how many times do we need to repeat that, right? Guys, you don't need Rob Christian. You only need Jesus because I myself need Jesus. We are all sinners. Anyone here who says he's not a sinner, he's a liar, including myself. If you catch me one day and, and hear Rob Christian saying, I'm not a sinner, then I'm a, 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 a disgusting hypocrite. And we are actually all hypocrites. This is why we need Jesus. Right, guys? This is why we need our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the first place. So guys, you don't need me, I'm replaceable. But if this is the plan of our Holy God, the Holy Spirit, for me to teach and use my knowledge and my Arabic language to expose this disgusting cult of Muhammad, this sex and death cult of Muhammad, then so be it. So be it. So thank you guys. Maybe you've seen my community message that I sent to all of you. We cannot thank you enough, guys. Because of you, we can do this, right? Because of you. So a big shout out to all of you. All right. The hadith. If you were not to commit sin, according to Muhammad, this is Muhammad talking, guys. Don't say this is Rob Christian. <laughs> according to Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, Sahih Muslim 2748b, that's the hadith number. And let me give you the link again. Let me give you the link again. Muhammad says, if you were not to commit sin, Allah, Allah Ta'ala 
would have swept you away of existence. So according to Muhammad, you must commit sin. You must commit sin, else Allah, the puppet master, the sock puppet of Muhammad, will take remove you completely out of ex existence. Poof! You're gone, brother. So Allah needs you to sin. Allah needs you to sin. You must be a sinner. I mean, Allah needs you to worship Him. Day in, day out, five times. Allah needs you to ask Him forgiveness. If you don't, if you are, let's say you are a righteous Muhammadan, you don't, uh, you don't want to go kill people, you don't want to commit sin, you, you try to be good. You know what Allah will do to you? I mean, the proof is in front of you. Allah will remove you out of existence. He, he's going to take his, uh, you know, his remover. Allah is a big remover, brother. You, you, need to, you, know, you need to be careful, brother. You must commit sin as a Muslim, brother. Right? So Allah will remove you out of existence if you don't commit sin. So you must be a sinner in Islam. You see it? Aha! Now I understand why there are so many sinners in Islam. You know? It's because of this hadith, brother. And Allah would have replaced you else by another people who will be, be sinners. Who will commit sins, brother. So if you are a righteous Abdul, Allah will remove you and He will replace you with true sinners, brother. Do you see it? Do you see it? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jojo. Uh, jo Jojo, Jojo. Call me if you dare. Call me if you dare, brother. Mr. Jihadi, keyboard terrorist, brother, in the live chat. Guys, don't block him, okay? Let him, let him spill his poison, no problem. Maybe he, he will learn. Mr. Jojo, Jojo. My Skype ID is Dear Rob Christian, brother. Call me, we are live. All right, my Skype is open. Look, my Skype is open. Look how many messages I'm having. I don't know. But my Skype is open, brother. Send me a message or call me, and I'm, call, I'm going to call you back. Or you call me, my Skype ID is Dear Rob Christian. And let's see, Mr. Key, Keyboard Jihadi. I've seen your comment. You are spamming my comment section, man. You know, don't we always say, guys, when we are live, when we are alive, these Muslims all become kittens. But when we go offline, you will see my comment section full of spam dude by Muslims. Why is that Muslims? I mean, if you are followers of Al-Haq, the Deen Al-Haq, right? The true religion, the religion of truth. Why are you such scared kittens when we are alive and you do not dare to call us? Why is that? Clearly, there's nothing fishy going on, right guys? Persecuted CT, send me a donation. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Abdul, call me, call me. Yalla, yalla, ya, Mr. Jojo. Jojo. Yeah. You know, in the comment section and in the chat, you are uh, lying, brother. <laughs> but you don't dare to call me and now you are the kitten of Allah. You became the kitten of the live chat, brother. Brother, huh? He's not a Muslim? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Guys, uh, you must learn, guys. Come on. You, when we were used to debate on Paul Talk in the old, old school days, right? When I used to debate and run rooms, right? When we used to debate shiuch, imams, Muslims. Back in the old days, you know, Muslims uh, had courage. You know, we were not like now, you know. We, we just came and we just started to learn about Islam and we, we had to do with what we had, right? There was no, you know, nothing, nothing was really online, not many translations, so we had to do with what we had, what we had right? With the knowledge that we had at that time. So Muslims were like lions, brother. And you had also Muslims who did not know much about Islam, you know, because they, you had still scared Muslims. You know what they used to do? They came in. And they said, we are Christians, brother. And after one minute, we already smell, these guys cannot be Christians. These are Muslims. And uh, later we find out this, these guys claim to be Christians, but they are Muslims. So guys, did you never hear, hear, did you never understand that taqiyya is allowed even when you debate Christians? You know, debating is deception, is war, brother. 
I mean, every, you know, we think this guy is a Muslim, my friend. He's a Muslim. Okay? Jojo, you're a coward. Ya Jaban ibn Jaban, you're a coward. Ya Munafiq. Let your dad or your mom call me if you're a coward. Maybe your Imam who is, you know, stuffing his face uh, with food at the moment. Right? Because, you know, that's, yeah. So guys, if you, as a Muslim, don't commit sin, Allah, according to Muhammad, Allah will replace you, right? With people who do actually commit sin. And then ask forgiveness for all, from Allah. And he would have granted them pardon. So you see, Allah needs sinners. Allah needs sinners in his life to forgive sinners. I mean, what's, uh, then Allah, I mean, Allah would, would lose his job, man. Allah, if he does not forgive sins, he will, lose, he's, he will be out of job. Right? Allah would be out of job. Guys, please don't insult anyone, okay? Don't insult the Muslims. I mean, they're already insulting themselves. They are already insulting themselves the moment they stay in this dark death cult, Islam. So guys, if you love me, if you have the love of Christ in your heart, never ever lower yourself to their level, okay? We, you know, pity these people, man. And we're not here, be, we are not here to hate Muslims. We don't hate Muslims, guys. Right? We don't hate Muslims. Right? I mean, yeah, uh, we have another Muslim, Maruf Khan. Maruf Khan. Do you have Skype? Maruf. Yeah, yeah, Maruf Khan. Do you have Skype? We are live on air. Call me on Skype. My Skype ID is D Rob Christian. Yes? Guys, please don't send me messages, okay? You are sending me messages and please accept me. What's the point, guys? Please. My Skype is full of messages, right? So only, right? Only Muslims. You have a poor internet connection. I mean, why didn't you say inshallah? Maybe Allah will help you with your connection, man. Connection is bad, brother. I mean, I mean, you are in a very holy month, Ramadan, brother. And still Allah is not fixing your, is not sending Jibreel to fix your connection, man. Brother. Yeah, Jojo is clearly not a Muslim, but he does care about Tafsir. He doesn't care about Tafsir. Yeah, brother. Yeah. You know, you're not a Muslim, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, guys? Truly not a Muslim. Guys, you need to be smarter than that. I mean, don't fall for the taqiyya, man. Come on. Hira, hira. In Hades, how are you, my friend? Welcome. So you see, guys, Allah, if he doesn't get asked or, you know, prayers from Muslims to forgive their sins, Allah would be out of job. So Allah needs sinners. Else Allah is going to replace them with true sinners, brother. Allah does not want nice people. Allah does not righteous people. Allah needs sinners. So Allah can still have a job. So he can forgive people, man. Yeah, goodbye, man. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. The truth is not for you, Mr. Maruf Khan. Right? The truth is only for the seekers of truth, right? So guys, let us sum, sum up what we taught you today is there free will in Islam if Allah guides or misguides who he likes so what's the point what is the need for Ramadan what is the need for the five prayers what is the need for good deeds if Allah someday might misguide you out of Islam brother? yes I, I saw it on Andrew Martin yes right and if you do not sin, as we showed you, Allah will replace you with people who do sin. Do you see? Allah needs sinners, man. Else Allah is going to be out of job. He can close his office. Right? Allah else had, has to close his office. So Allah needs sinners. That's, you know, Allah has two jobs. He created Muslims so they can worship him. Right? And his second job is forgiveness. Else Allah is going to go bankrupt, brother. 
right? So Muslims, you really need to wake up. You need to really start questioning your faith. Can Islam truly be the religion of the truth? Deen al-Haq. Or is this nothing but the invention, the fabrication by Muhammad and Khadija and Waraka as we showed you in our last live shows? Right? We prove to you that Islam is created by the money and the power of Khadija. And she hired Waraka ibn Nufil, you know, to help her out to make Muhammad the prophet of the Islamic nation, the Arab nation. Right? They had the money. Khadija had the money, she had the power, and who could fit the job better than Muhammad, right? Waraka and Khadija, the richest women of Mecca. So Muslims, you really need to start thinking here with me, right? Should you believe, should you believe the Muhammad Muslims? Should you really believe Muhammad? Should you really believe in a so-called prophet who stole the wife of his adopted son and said, Subhan muqallib al-qulub, glory to Allah who turns hard, glory to Allah who made me fall in love and flirt with my own daughter-in-law, right? Blaming Allah for falling in love with Zainab bint Jahsh. Zainab, the daughter of the donkey, his own daughter-in-law, right? That was her name, Zainab bint Jahsh. And we know that one of the ten privileges of Muhammad, if he looks at a Muslim woman who is married, her own Muslim husband must divorce her immediately, right? Because Muhammad may be falling in love with her. So her husband must immediately divorce her. So if Muhammad flirt with her, and he must give her to Muhammad, so Muhammad can immediately start to F her. Should you really believe in a guy, in Muhammad, who swore an oath that he would stop having sex with the female slave, Maria Al-Qutiyah? And then later, right, comes back and says, Allah told me to break my promise? Allah told me to continue have sex with Maria al qubtiya the slave. In other words, Muhammad blaming Allah, his sock puppet, to help him out again from the disaster, right? Adultery, committing adultery behind his wife's back, behind the back of Hafza and Aisha, by saying, yeah, I mean, Allah is the one who ordered me to break my promise, to break my oath. Should you really believe in a guy who delivered the satanic verses in Mecca to the Quraysh of Mecca and smack Allah in the face and proving that Allah could not keep his promise in the Quran, that he would protect his slave Muhammad from Satan. Clearly Allah, you know, Allah said in the Quran, Allah clearly says in the Quran, I will protect my slaves, i.e. Muhammad is his slave, right? From Satan. Then we see that Muhammad falls for the trap of Satan, Satan gives the satanic verses uh, on Muhammad's tongue and Muhammad delivers it to the pagan of Mecca. Huh? Then we find also out that Muhammad claiming that he's a victim of black magic, a black magic spell that was giving him delusional thoughts and false beliefs. We can find in Sahih al-Bukhari from the mouth of Aisha, the mother of the believers, that Muhammad was under the black magic spell of Satan for a very long time, for at least six months. Other sources say even one long year. How do you know at, in that long year, or let's say six months, let us be political correct here. How do you know if Muhammad didn't deliver more satanic verses when he is under the control of Satan, Muslims? under the black magic of Satan, right? You claim this is a prophet of God, Muslims. Where is Allah when you need him to protect Muhammad, his slave, from the hands of Satan? Those hadith are already debunked. Ah, you are a Quran only Abdul. 
Can you show me the five prayers in the Quran? Can you show me the Shahada in the Quran, brother? Can you show me almost all of the foundations of Islam in the Quran? No, you can't. No, you can't. Can you show me how you can how you must pray in the Quran? Can you show me how, what the rituals are in the Quran? You, you can't. You 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 I think it's a Rashad Khalifa boy, guys. It's Rashad Khalifa boy. I know. You know, because uh, Rashad Khalifa boy in Discord, when I was telling that I'm going to go live in Discord, this guy he said, unblock me, please. He was crying for me to unblock him, right? So it's the same guy. It's the same. He's, you know, he loves our shows. This is why he comes and, you know, try out his luck with the many names and nicknames that he has. So it's it's him. It's him. He's a Rashad Khalifa boy. He rejects Sunnah. But he, at the same time, he's a hypocrite. And he thinks that the Quran, some passages of the Quran, are about Rashad Khalifa. And Rashad Khalifa is... The last messenger, not Muhammad, Rashad Khalifa is their last messenger. And also these Rashad Khalifa boys, like Ultimate Shirk, they believe. They believe that parts of the Quran are even corrupted. Can you imagine? So, you know, they will stab you on the streets of Mecca. Like they stabbed your master, Rashad Khalifa, in the 90s in his own mosque, brother. Right? Do we have any Muslims? Any real Muslims? What happened guys? We had 300 people watching. Now we have 220? Hmm. Okay. Maybe we are putting a lot of people asleep. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Let us see if we can uh, accept some calls guys. Do, are there Christians? Since we are out of Muslims. Are there Christians who wants to call? Are there Christians who wants to call? If yes. Give me two minutes guys. Give me two minutes. I need to take some water. Let me go grab some water. Because I'm out of water, guys. Sorry. All right. I'm out of water. Let's say be right back. And then we will accept calls from our audience. Yeah, Rooney. Yo, Carl. Hitting the clubs. Got a case of Red Bull. Going to pull an all-nighter. You down? Yeah. Hey, Alison! It's me, Carl! I'm here! Alison! I'm here! Alison! Hey, who were those guys? Oh, that's Rooney, my new friend Lee. He's a male nurse. <laughs> we hit a couple of raves last night. It was totally off the hook. Yeah, you seem a little hyper. I had a couple Red Bulls. Have you ever had a Red Bull? I never had a Red Bull before, but I had a Red Bull last night. I really like Red Bull. I got a new necklace. Glows in the dark. But you can't really see it right now. Unless you do this. That's really something. Doesn't Red Bull make you crash pretty hard? No, no, no. No, no. I don't think so. No. Uh, no. Hey, after we jog, we should get a Red Bull. You can get a Red Bull or I get a Red Bull. We could share a Red Bull. Okay, that'd be Red really... Bull. That sounds... Red Bull. Red Bull. I think I'd really... I'd really... I better manifest some coffee. Hola! Juan Valdez! Buenos días. Buenos días. Disfruta un buen café. Gracias, señor. Adiós. Adiós! Now that's fresh mountain grown coffee from the hills of Colombia. I better manifest some coffee. Hola! Juan Valdez! Buenos días. Buenos días. Disfruta un buen café. Gracias, señor. Adiós. Adiós! Now that's fresh mountain grown coffee from the hills of Colombia. I better manifest some coffee. All right, guys. We're back. Thank you uh, allowing me to get something to drink. Do we have any Muslims 
First, let me ask the question, do we have any Muslims? Anyone? Anyone? Hello? Someone is asking what movie is this? Uh, this is uh, from uh, Jim Carrey's movie, uh, Bruce Almighty, I think. Yeah, Bruce Almighty. Yeah. And the other one was the Yes Man. No Muslims. Okay, let's see if we can take calls. I think I missed a call. Let's see if I can call this person back. He's a Christian, I think. Let me call him. The first call of the today, guys. Hello? Yes, you're live on air. Hello. Sorry to bother. Let me mute yeah, please real quick. mute, mute um, YouTube, please. Mute to YouTube. Yep. So, my question is um, it, it follows that if all Allah commands you to do something, i.e., your destiny is written, yes. and then Allah commands you to sin, then I think the most important question is at what point, it, what is sin? Does it make sense? Yes, what is sin? Yeah, we have we have been asking Muslims all the time. You know, uh, tell us what what why do you do you not believe in original sin? What is Allah? Uh, what what is the point of, of doing all these good deeds if Allah right commands you to sin and Allah is the one who wrote the sin on you? Even if you know, even well, if you want, the, yeah, go ahead. The, the problem that you run into specifically is what is justice? What is mercy? Mm -hmm. And what is, um, everything falls apart. Yes, exactly. It doesn't make sense, right? And, uh, well, it requires God to be illogical. And yes. So and are, you saying, are you saying that Allah is illogical, Allah cannot be God? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, if Allah is God, then that makes Allah insane. <laughs> How dare you, man? During Ramadan, you're calling Allah... Uh, crazy <laughs> i have no fear of a false god <laughs> yeah good god bless you my friend yeah, you know allah whole islam muhammad himself you know everything in islam we have doing this for 15 years guys this religion is crazy i i i'm really trying to understand after 15 years i'm still don't understand how you can be a muslim is this crazy arab cult you know, Allah says, you know, uh, we sent prophets to all the nations, right? And then we see that Muhammad is sent to, to the Arab nation. So why are there Indonesian Muslims if Muhammad is sent only to the Arabs, right? Where's, where's the English one? Yeah, where's the English one? Where's the Chinese one? Exactly. Um, <laughs> but more so than that from like a logical standpoint, I mean, if you look at the names of Muhammad, he has names that only apply to God. Yeah, you know, the praised one, right? The first and the last. Yeah, no, the, the first and the last. If, if he, he's the first without a qualifier and the last without a qual qualifier. If yes, you yes. take if those titles, that. then you, yeah. you have to be before and after Allah. Yes, exactly. Oh my. Exactly. And, and even his name, the praised one. I mean, if we go to the Quran, yep. chapter 1, right? Let me open mm -hmm. the Quran. Chapter 1, ayah 2, it says, All praise, you see it? All praise is unto Allah. So how did Muhammad become the praised one? Alhamdulillah, right? It, well, All praise to Allah. So how did Muhammad became the praised one? Can any Muslim tell us that? Can anyone, ex any Muslim explain? If all praise is for Allah, how can Muhammad claim to be the praised one? Chapter 1, Ayah 2, Tamara. Chapter 1, Ayah 2, 2. Yeah, so exactly, you know, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm looking at a, a site that's the 99 names of Muhammad, and it's like half these are ones for God. I don't understand why you can apply these without without committing basically idolatry by elevating a, a creation. Even the even the name uh, mercy. If you say if you say that the Allah is all merciful, and that is one of his 99 names, the problem with that is Allah just elevated a mm -hmm. created object. He's, he created mercy exactly. to his name. Mm -hmm. How what? Yeah. Doesn't make sense, right? Uh, 
the whole the whole idea falls apart. I mean, uh, you know, Islam is truly. Sometimes I think, you know, sometimes you know, when I'm I, when I'm done with a live show, and maybe we had a luck to debate a Muslim, and then it's evening. You know, I go through the comment section. I see a lot of Muslim comments. You know, when we are done teaching, we see a lot of comments, and I think to myself, I've been teaching for three hours straight. We showed everybody on the screen what kind of crazy religion Islam is. How, what, what drives you? What drives you to stay a Muslim in 2020? I don't understand these people and I will never do. I am a Christian right. first and foremost, but yeah. I'm also an engineer and that engineering logic drives a lot of the functions that I do. So exactly. words yeah. have meaning. Exactly. And exactly. if those words don't have meaning, then yeah. that's a self-defeating. Exactly, my friend. It's uh, self, you know, it, it self destructs actually, right? Yes, it because, very much does. Yeah, exactly. Because when we go to the Quran, we see that Allah uh, is the one who sends down the Injil and the Torah. And Allah says He will protect His words. Then suddenly we see Muslims in 2020, we see Muslims calling Allah and His prophet a liar, while Muhammad himself confirms the Torah, Muhammad has the Torah in his hand, he has the gospel together with, Khadi, uh, with Khadija's cousin, Waraq ibn in his hand, translating the Injil for him, right? In Sah according to Sahih al-Bukhari report, Waraq was translating the gospel, Muhammad had the Torah in his hand, but Muhammad, Muhammad's followers, now the Muslims in 2020 say, no, no, Muhammad is a liar, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and Allah is a liar. You know, they, they, are, they are calling them well, liars, the man. The, the problem so from a um, from a, a logic standpoint is if you have someone that claims to be the greatest of all liars, yeah. how do you know he's leading you? <laughs> exactly, Allah, I mean, makarin. Allah, the best of the well, singers. Exactly. It uh, it's more than that. So if you go to like the esch eschatology statements, supposedly mm -hmm. Issa will come back, destroy the pigs, mm -hmm. uh, break the cross, and he will kill the greatest of all deceivers. Yes. Yes. Okay. And he's going to be the right, righteous judge. I mean, how can he be the righteous judge? That um, means that that means Jesus has no yes. does does not need any witnesses. He does not need any witnesses, eyewitnesses. So that means well, you know, it seems that Jesus, this Jesus, this Islamic Jesus, is uh, something, man. Well, e even in the eschatology, if you go uh -huh. look at it from the standpoint of going and kill the greatest deceiver, well, since Allah in the Quran claims to be the greatest deceiver, then that means Issa kills Allah. Yes, Making exactly. Him Allah. Yeah. <laughs> then again, Are Islam sure self destructs. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And bro, That's there's like a ch that. there's an ayah in chapter five of the Quran, you know, where Muhammad created a huge disaster. What is this that disaster, Rob Christian? Well, chapter five. There's a chapter five. If I'm not mistaken, ayah forty seven. It says that Christians must obey the gospel and what is taught inside the gospel. But wait. If we must go and judge but by, by the gospel and what the gospel says, we have to reject Muhammad, we have to reject Allah, we have to reject Islam because our gospel says that Jesus is the word of God. Jesus came into the flesh and he died for all mankind and raised on the third day. He was risen on the third day. So here Muhammad did a nice self-destruction, right? How can you say to the Christians, go judge by the gospel while the gospel destroys Muhammad and Islam? Well. Right? You have all these Muslims say that Deuteronomy 18 um, is 18:18 is is the verse of Muhammad. Okay, yes. that's fine. We, we'll run with that. Yeah. Just for a moment, we will suspend all logic. Can we read the passage in context? And as soon as you ask for that, yes. topic change. Yeah. Ch chapter 18:18, you know, 18, 18, Deuteronomy 18:18. 18, 18, there will be a uh, a prophet from among them, right? The uh, yes. the Hebrew Israel, the Israelites, right? How, how is Muhammad uh, well, a prophet from among so, them if he's not an Israelite? It's more so than that. Is mm -hmm. um, it, If you go into the, the context, it, mm -hmm. it gives you a definition. The prophet is required to prophesy in my name. In the name of who? In the name of who? In, Just in, for the audience. Oh, so in, in Hebrew it's Y-H-W-H. Um, Jehovah, some, right? In Jehovah's name. Well, it, it's not... There's no J in Hebrew, so it'd be Yahovah. Or, Yahovah, yeah. Jehovah, uh, Yahovah, yeah. Or it could be um, mm -hmm. Yahweh. So yeah. it'd be one of the two. Mm -hmm. The the meaning of the name is I am or I be. 
Exactly, the I am. Yeah. The I am who I, sent you, I right? Am. When he said in Exodus 3.15, yes. right? The I am sent me. Yeah, so, uh, and that's that is going to be his name forever, according to Exodus 3.15. So, when Muslims so claim, you know, when Muslims claim it's about Muhammad, but wait a second, Muhammad did not mention Javah or Jehovah, let's say, in the Quran. We see that the name of this of this God is Allah. So we see a different God, right? We see a different God. And if we well, go two verses later, we go to Deuteronomy 18.20, right? We see that if any so-called prophet uh, uh, mention other names, that that prophet will be uh, put to death. So according to these... Yeah. Yeah, according to these verses of, from Deuteronomy 18 that Muslims love to quote, that means if Muhammad lived in the time of Moses, Moses would have picked up stones together with his men and they would have stoned Muhammad to death because that was the punishment for blasphemy, right? Correct. And we'll go into blasphemy if you go to, for instance, when Caiaphas tore his clothes. Um, exactly. The Christ said that I'm seated at the right hand of power. Yeah. Caiaphas got that. He yeah. understood. As the high priest, he had to have a complete understanding of the, of the um, Old Testament and also all the Jewish uh, traditions and stuff. Yeah. But he bro, understood exactly. Bro, the, exactly all the Muslims, exactly. all the Muslims think that Deuteronomy 18.18 18 is about Muhammad. Are you telling me, Muslims, that according to two verses later, if Moses... Right? Would have seen Muhammad, Moses would have grabbed stones and he would throw them at Muhammad. And how Although dare you how dare you to compare Muhammad then with Moses? Because Moses would have put Muhammad to death with stoning. Right? Yes. You see the hypocr hypocrisy here? The irony when they go to eighteen eighteen? <laughs> well, they can't read it in context. It's they can only read mm. that one verse and they have to chop everything out from that. They can't mm. read the verse above it or below. It's it's kinda like the verse of to your religion, to uh, your, your your religion, be your religion, to our religion, be our religion, and so on and so forth. So that's exactly. not what it said. Yes, exactly. Go read it. Go read the verse above it and the verse below it, and it's like, no, that's not what was said here. Yeah, it says in Deuteronomy eighteen twenty, and I put it on the screen for the, our audience, guys. This is the book of Deuteronomy eighteen twenty. This is right. Let's say this is in the time of Moses, but a prophet. If Muslims say this is Deuteronomy eighteen eighteen is about Muhammad. Why are you not reading? Continue reading to verse 20, right? Why are you stopping at 18? It says, but a prophet, if you claim that this is Muhammad, but a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, God is saying, right? Our that. holy God saying, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, this prophet now, is going to be put to death. Do you see it? It's, let's take those last several words who speaks the name of other gods, then you run into the problem of, specifically from a logical fallacy standpoint, yes. um, the satanic verses, Allah, uh, 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 exactly. Eluza, and Manat. Exactly. The problem with that is, that triggers the other gods clause. The other mm -hmm. issue with that is, uh, Muslims believe that the Quran is on heavenly stone tablets. Okay, fine, let's go with that. Yeah. If those verses are in those heavenly stone tablets, then your mm -hmm. God is senile and insane. Exactly. If they're not, then you cannot say that the Quran is corrupt, is perfectly preserved because those verses should not be in there. Yes, exactly. So e either way, it explodes in a bottle of fire, and there is no safe way out of that. Yeah. You have not made uh, Muhammad the, 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 the judge between you, so you cannot claim to be a Muslim. There is no way to claim to be a Muslim. Yeah, exactly. You just you can't. In the end, Islam um, self-destructs, my friend. Exactly. It explodes in a ball of fire. Yeah, exactly. This is why we can conclude that Islam is nothing but a man-made religion. Because if Allah claims to be God, God cannot make such mistakes. God cannot change his mind. You know, we go to the well, Old Testament, we see that his, that's his name, the I am. Uh, uh, suddenly, in Muhammad's time, suddenly this so-called God, who claimed that it's the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is a huge insult, by the way. How dare you to call god by other oh, names yeah. while his name he has a name he's the i am so how did the i am suddenly when he promises that that's his name forever and ever suddenly we see his name is changed and his name is allah when you claim while you muslims claim this is the same god of abraham isaac and jacob are you saying that allah can change his mind is your well, god uh, is a god that can change his mind this cannot be my god uh, uh, sorry it's gonna be my god 
Um, you can never change. God, well, from the Judeo-Christian view, you can never change God's will. Um, but you can beseech him to the point where he acquiesces on something that's against his, uh, uh, allow something to happen untoward, for instance, like Job or something like that. But there is a very, it's, it was never in his will that Job should, 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 should suffer, if that makes any kind of sense. That was. Yeah, God, God, God does not change, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, however, okay, let's say that Allah's tablets are eternal and the Quran is eternal. Okay, we'll operate under the assumption that the Quran is uncreated. Okay, yes. following that, Allah had all of eternity to get this right. <laughs> all of eternity to make the Quran perfect. Yeah. All of eternity to make sure that everything in those 124,000 odd other prophets were talked to in ad nauseum so that we have the writings. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Why do you have the verse of abrogation in there? Mm -hmm. It's not necessary. He had eternity to get it right. Now, yeah. It also yeah, why, why do you need to abrogate something that you sent before, right? That doesn't make Correct. sense. Well, yet, yet you had eternity to get it right. Yeah. Now, it also follows from the standpoint of um, jurisprudence in Islam. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You're required to have two witnesses to charge someone of a crime. Is that correct? Yes. And with two witnesses or four women. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where is the writings? I want the writings of the other prophet. Where are they? Show mm -hmm. them to me. Let me read them. Yeah, exactly. Where are they? Where Where are they? I want them. If the yeah. Bible is corrupt, okay, fine. But give me something. Don't tell me it's corrupted and then when I ask for something, walk away. That, I'm sorry, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I've got 40 prophets that follow one after the other that tell me this is the way it is. Exactly. And you have some guy that's got it's self only self referencing. Only yeah. self referencing. Yeah. Yeah. It's Tells funny, me. you know. I mean, this guy claims to be prophet. Should you not examine uh, if, if this guy is a liar or not? I mean, many people before Muhammad claimed to be, to be prophets. Many people came to say, yeah, this is, uh, I'm a prophet from God. Should you not put such a person in on test? What's your proof? Where are your miracles? Uh, where are your fulfilled prophecies? We can't find one single fulfilled prophecy in the whole Quran. No, sing no single miracle. What's that? How dare you? Yeah. Yeah. And you must well, say he's, he's the leader of all the prophets. Well, we can find that, uh, you know, Allah needs to send someone in the form of Jibreel to squeeze Muhammad, to squeeze some Jews out of him in Cave Hira. Uh, angels, my friend. News shock, news flash. Angels don't do that to, no, to, to people. This cannot be else than a demon, right? Well, angels, show, show angels don't do that, right? Angels would have said, "I come in peace," like you know, for when Mary, right? She received yes. the good news. They said to her, "Salamu alaykum, ya Maryam, ya mutilat Rabbu Maaki," right? So, peace upon you, Ma Mary. Did uh, Muhammad receive peace? No, Muhammad did not receive peace. The demon started to choke him, right? And Muhammad said, "I can't. Well, I could not even bear it anymore." Yeah. Show me another prophet where this happened. Yeah, that, that's exactly. easy. Point. Yeah, I, that's did, all I'm asking. You, exactly, you got all exactly. this stuff. Point. Yeah. Did Moses Point. experience this? Right? Did Moses that you love to compare Muhammad with? Did Moses experience this? No. Well, I mean, here's an example specific with Moses. Um, God said, "Go and be God in front of Pharaoh." Well, people mm -hmm. call that blasphemy that are not uh, Christians or Jews. Mm -hmm. And the reason is it is is God set his mantle on on Moses. Well, what they don't realize is is uh, Pharaoh claimed to be God. Yes. And so it's like, and the Lord was like, "No, you're going to go over there and you're going to whack this dude around with a large trout until mm -hmm. he understands." And um, the tw uh, ten plagues were after the gods of the uh, um, Egyptians. Yeah. Right, right on down the list and. It's like no let me let me wake you up and make sure i have your attention yeah. um, i really enjoy the uh the, the yeah the for sure man I, thank you this was know. really a blessing of a call keep calling us uh, in the future my friend thank you for calling us live on air right. god more, bless you more than happy. appreciate thank you. appreciate the call goodbye goodbye Bye. that was an amazing call guys thank you uh do we have more callers guys are there more callers? Uh, do we have Muslims? 
Rob Christian and his $5 mic. Exactly, Debit Ray. Can you imagine, man? The damage that we are doing with this $5 mic. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Christian who wants to call? Do we have more callers? <clears throat> any Muslim? Any Christian? Any question in the live chat that we can maybe address, guys? Sorry if we missed your earlier questions. But we try our best to answer as many questions as we can. Let's see if we can pick up a question from the live chat. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yes, uh, the betrayal. You know what? Let me call you. Let me call you. Our admin wants to call us. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad Yasu al Masih Habibi, salam wa salam al Masih ilak. Welcome. Amen. Your life yeah. is brother. How are you, guys? Yeah. We, have we have our admin debitary on the on the call. Go Hi ahead, guys, Masha. God bless you all. Good. Tuhan Yesus memberkati mu to everyone. Uh, welcome, Masha. Uh, so it's just a short question, Rob Christian. Yes. So basically, I've been wondering: um, Is there any reference historical? Um, regarding if Muhammad ever have time to repent like that, like have you ever thought about repenting? Is there any sources, something like that? Mm, After all the things yeah. he have done? No, no. We, <laughs> you mean to become a Christian? No, not really. I, like, uh, let's say that uh, yeah. because like I've been seeing like had some of the hadith said that, that mm. Muhammad was bewitched, and some of them uh, like mm. after all the things he have done, but. I'm pretty sure even if he have repented, the the works that he did, yeah. like there's still going to be the same thing, isn't it? No, but he he made he he made a mistake. Mm. The only thing that I know is, uh, you know, in one of his last uh, actually words, right? He, he said he actually gave the Quran to his ummah, right? Yeah. And one of the last ayahs of the Quran is, you know, and we completed your deen, we completed the religion of called Islam according mm. to the Quran. But Muhammad wanted to write something down. Muhammad asked for pen and paper, right? Okay. According to Sahih al-Bukhari hadith. So Sahih hadith, brother. Don't say Rabbi Kishi, you're lying. <laughs> according to Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad is asking for pen and paper. It seems that Muhammad can write and read. Okay. Muslims, they, Muslims claim he cannot write and read. So Muhammad asked for pen and paper and he says, let me write something for you down so you Muslims, you my followers, will not go astray. Omar heard this. He said, no, 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 no. Muhammad became delusional. Don't give him anything. He just gave us the Quran. What oh. can you give us more? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's really yeah. savage. What can what can he give us more? When, when he just gave us one of the last ayahs that says we just completed the religion for you. We completed this book for you, right? So mm. Muhammad was prevented by Omar. <laughs> Omar, the real prophet of Islam, he was prevented by Omar to write something down, you know, because they already had the Quran. So you see, I mean, where is Allah? Where mm -hmm. is Allah to stop Muhammad from saying, let me write something down for mm -hmm. you not, so that you will not go astray, so that you will not uh, become disbelievers, right? Muhammad is saying. Mm -hmm. You see the disaster that Muhammad created even on his deathbed? So he was he was on his deathbed, right, at that moment mm. when he was saying, "Bring me some paper and pen to write something down for you." Right? <laughs> you see the disaster. So um, what repentance? No, he, you know he he was a, an agent of Satan until his last breath, right? That's uh, really really sad to be honest with you. Like, I can't I just can't believe that how Khadija and Warak of Bin Nopal came up with some kind of plan um, to, um, to how to, how they put it to make it to make a uh, Muhammad or else Qatim ibn Kilab <laughs> ibn Kilab to be turned such a such yeah. thing. Yeah. And it's uh, crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, I noticed also in Sahih al Bukhari, volume one yeah. book one, hadith three. Um yeah. the last sentence it says that when Waraka died, the divine inspiration stopped for a while, is it? Yes, that's Sahih al Bukhari. Uh, last so, time we showed it on the screen, exactly. Yeah. So that uh, so that's the whole point that <clears throat> um that's where the Muhammad got the so-called the revelation instead from uh what i could be no 
Uh, you mean when he was translating the gospel? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you repeat what you just said? Because I didn't catch it. Can you repeat what you said? Oh, I just said I'm quite a bit nervous talking with you. Uh, yeah. No, 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 don't, yeah, be, yeah, no, don't be my friend. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I'm a nobody, man. I'm just here to serve, my friend. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Don't, no, it's just that. Yeah, like it's just that. Uh, the last sentence. Yeah. It says uh, when Waraka. Uh, he died. Yeah. He went died. Uh, when Waraka died, the divine inspiration stopped for a while, right? Yeah, it was halted. Yeah, stopped. Okay, so. Yeah. So yeah. there was like clear indication that Muhammad was solely dependent on Waraka ibn Nufal, right? Yes, of course. And I, w he, I was wondering for how, for how long did Waraka ibn Nufal been translated for Muhammad? Yeah. Well, for a long time, as long he was uh, alive, he was helping Muhammad out with fabrications of the Quran. Waraka was translating, right? Mm -hmm. Waraka uh, was translating from the Gnostic writings. Waraka was translating from the Injil. And mm. when Waraka died, suddenly, what a shock, what a shock, divine inspiration stops, <laughs> Jibreel stops coming, Muhammad mm. becomes very sad, right? He, he becomes very sad and he even goes, uh, right? He, he even goes on top of the mountain to throw himself for it, right? That's no problem. Uh, guys, are you still hearing? Are you still hearing me? Give a one for Christian, Rob Christian. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me guys? Give me one if you can hear me. Refresh guys, refresh, okay, refresh. So suddenly Muhammad becomes suicidal, mm. right? And he wants to jump. And every time he wants to jump, Jibreel comes. Let me put the hadith on the screen. Every time Muhammad wants to jump, Jibreel comes. He says, no, no, don't jump. You're a prophet, brother. Brother? Brother, don't jump, brother. Don't, you know, you see? The prophet becomes so sad that Jibreel dies, right? Mm. Let's see, let me go a little bit back. But after a few days, Waraka died. You see it, guys? And divine inspiration was also paused for a while. And the Prophet, brother, Allah is praying on him, <laughs> became so sad. The Prophet of Islam became so sad, brother, as we have heard that they intended several times to throw himself from the tops of the high mountains. So Muhammad becomes suicidal. And every time he wants to jump, Jibreel said, no, stop, in the name of Allah, Bismillah, <laughs> don't do it, brother. <laughs> ikra, ikra, ikra. Yeah, Lord knows if, if he was getting squeezed again by Jibreel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Muhammad, you're indeed Allah's messenger, brother. Don't throw yourself, brother. And every time he wants to do it, you know, Jibreel, he, it's me, Jibreel, don't do it, brother. Don't jump, brother. Look and, how many times, guys. Look, look And it's look. like three times, is it? Eh, many times, bro. Many times. Many oh times. So then Jibril comes again. It's me, Jibril. Don't do it. Muhammad, don't you dare to do it. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is mm -hmm. such a disaster. I'm really thankful to God for uh, you and uh, Christian Prince. Like, Thank you, my friend. Otherwise, I really had trouble back then because every time Muslims say, hey, we serve one God, we serve one God, yeah, hey, yeah. we don't have Jesus' prophet, and then suddenly. I regret through only then I, when I talk to them about the Quran, the Hadiths, especially uh, yeah. Sunnah and Nisai, Sahih, brother, Sahih, <laughs> three to five five. Um, I talk about how like Aisha was uh, married at six, and later Muhammad consumed the match at nine. That's where, that's where everything he just accused me of. Yeah. Islamophobic. I'm like, yeah, as, <laughs> as if we, as if you, we are scared of Islam to be called. Islamophobes. Phobia means you're scared. The one who invented the word Islamophobes or Islamophobia was really very smart, Abdul, right? Because do you see me scared? Am I scared, guys? I'm doing live shows every week. Where are the Muslims to refute us? Who is the scared? Me or the Abduls or the Imams who do not dare to call us live so we, you know, they can refute us, right? Yeah. They're, they're still like meow in the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. In the so, comment yeah. section only, my friend. Only in the comment section. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's it. Thank you very much. Prof. Thank you for Thank calling, you. brother. God bless all. El Rabbi Barikak. Habibi, Barikak in Thank Amen. you for calling. Bye. Take care. God Blessings. Bye-bye. Yeah. So, do we have any Muslim guys? Any Muslim? Who has the courage and the knowledge to call us? 
who wants to defend his suicidal prophet? Any Muslim? Now guys, <clears throat> if you listen carefully, we had, uh, we mentioned this hadith, right? Muhammad, when he was in Khaybar, right? When Muhammad was in Khaybar, he just killed a lot of people, right? In Khaybar, a lot of Jews. He killed fathers, he killed uncles, he killed husbands, and he took many women as sex slaves, right? The right hand possesses the sex slaves, right? And then the story goes like this. A Jewish woman offers to make food for Muhammad. And I mean, truly, you must be crazy. You must be a madman to accept it. I mean, you just killed her father. You just killed her uncles. You just killed her brothers. And it's nothing fishy going on that she's offering you to make food for you? Don't you think that this Jewish lady is going to poison me? Muhammad. So Muhammad later, you know, after she poisoned him, Muhammad, according to Aisha, the mother of the believers, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 4428, 4428, let me give you the link, guys. Please bookmark the links that we use, save them. You can also find them back in the comment section. Our admins will provide them later, okay? And also you can find them, of course, in the live chat because the live chat, you will, can always go back to the live chat. It takes YouTube uh, 40 minutes, let's say, to process the video and then you can open the live chat and you can have access to the links that we are providing in the live chat. Let me read the hadith, guys, from the mother of the believers, Aisha. Narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment in which he died used to say, Muhammad was in pain, right? And Aisha even saying, guys, in another hadith, I've never seen someone suffering like Muhammad. I mean, where is Allah to not allow Muhammad to, be, to suffer so much from the poison, right? Used to say, Muhammad used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the poisoned food I ate at Khaybar. Do you see it, guys? And at this time, I feel, there is nothing called as if in the Arabic, I feel, this is false translation, what else is new, guys? I feel my aorta is being cut from the poison. Where is Allah when you need Him? Wow! Wow! Do you see Muhammad actually? If we go to the Quran and we see what Allah is saying, let me show, show you what Allah is saying, guys. Um, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let me see if I can find. If we can find uh, the ayah about the Watin, the aorta. Chapter 6944, I think that's the one. Let me go there. 69. To prove to you that no one else but Allah killed Muhammad. What did you say, Rob Christian? Allah killed Muhammad? Yes. Allah is the one who cut off the aorta of Muhammad. And he's the one who put the Jewish women into the mix to poison Muhammad. So his aorta is going to be cut off. Right? It says here, guys, وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بِبَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَخَدْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَتِينِ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينِ That's what the Arabic says. Let us translate what it's saying, guys. All right? Guys, pay attention. Let me prove to you that no one else but Allah cut off the aorta of Muhammad. And if he had forged concerning us some discourses, some ayahs, this is really a bad translation. Let me see if this is a better translation, guys. Okay, had he invented, do you see it, guys? Allah is saying, had he, Muhammad, invented against us any sayings, anything false, 
then Allah would have taken him by his right hand. Do you see it? Allah would have taken Muhammad. Continue reading, guys. Then we would have surely cut his live vein. al -wateen. Live vein means the aorta, right? The aorta, the artery. So who killed Muhammad, guys? Who killed Muhammad? Allah. Because it says, I feel that my aorta is being cut from the poison. Right? Wajatu, Muhammad is saying, Wajatu in qata abhari. Right? My aorta. My aorta. Do you see it? So we can conclude because Muhammad was inventing ayahs, the satanic verses. Right, chapter 22, ayah 52. Allah is the one who sent that Jewish woman to poison Muhammad to make his aorta be cut off. Life vein. Some people maybe don't know what life vein means. Let me take another. Aorta, brother. Do you see it? So who cut off the aorta? I mean, Muhammad is confirming it. My aorta is being cut off. Who cut off his aorta? Allah, brother. By sending the Jewish woman to poison Muhammad. Allah. Didn't Allah say if Muhammad would invent things, he would cut off his aorta? Yes. And if he, Muhammad, and if he, Muhammad, had divulged false sayings, the satanic verses, concerning us, Allah, we surely should have seized him by his right hand, and then certainly should should have caught off his life artery. Uh oh. So Allah got rid of Muhammad in the end. Even Allah was tired of Muhammad. Hey, most use how are you, my brother? My brother from another mother. How are you, my friend? Guys, our brother most use is a dear brother of mine from the Potok time back in the old days. He used to be an, a really amazing admin in my room when we were teaching in Potok. And at times that Christian Prince was there, you know, back in the old time, good times, the Potok days. So you see Muhammad, even Muhammad's Allah, Allah himself was tired of Muhammad. So he cut off his aorta. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> ah. Any Muslim, any Muslim who can defend his fake prophet, even Allah was tired of Muhammad's lines. Can you imagine guys? Allah is the one who cut off the aorta of Muhammad. You see it? وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بِبَعْضِ الْأَقَاوِيلِ لَأَخَدْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَتِينَ بِالْيَمِينَ ثُمَّ وَلَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ Brother, we cut off the aorta. We will make sure to cut off his aorta. Brother, take beer. Allah killed Muhammad. No one else. Allah killed Muhammad? Yes, brother. We just proved it to you. Guys, if, if you like to download our videos and cut parts out, you know, I received a message from a Christian, a, you know, you know, some Christians, you know. We asked, you know, last time, not yesterday, the day before, we did a three hour live show. We had more than 240 people watching, all right? I was tired, my voice was gone, all right? And I received a message, Rob Christian, why are you doing three hour live shows? And why are you not, uh, you know, uh, cutting parts and video edit? My friend, I just did a three hour live show. Why are you, so, you, you, if you call yourself a Christian, why are you not downloading our videos? Help me to help you. You know, I'm a tired guy, right? After three hours doing live show, I, you know, my voice is gone. I'm tired. Maybe I need some rest. I have a family to take care of, you know, I'm about to become a daddy. And you still ask me to, you know, to spend my whole day in, you know, doing all kind of stuff while we need to do research. Uh, you know, I have a life. Why are you not downloading my videos? Cut the parts that you like. Share them on your own YouTube channel. Share them on social media. Help me to help you. Maybe you can translate all the parts yourself in your language. 
guys, come on. I'm uh, okay. Maybe you know we can do what we can do, but we cannot stay the, all day long behind a computer. I just did the hour live show, man. Have mercy on me, man. All right, so guys, we cannot clearly we cannot please everyone. Do you see it? We try, guys, but you cannot ask us to do everything. Help us. I'm not asking you to teach like we do. But at least do what you have to do, guys. Don't be lazy. All right? Don't be lazy and, you know, ask us things that we not cannot handle. You know, I, I just did a three-hour live show, man. Have mercy on me. <laughs> I didn't talk to my wife. I didn't even, you know... Talk to my umber child, you know, you know, he's, he's still in the belly, man. Give me some time. Give me some. <laughs> I know, guys, I know, you know, I like some advices, but come on, guys. Right? You need to do your work, too. We're not asking you to teach, guys. Come on. But download our videos. Cut parts that you like. Translate them. Help me to help you. Maybe you want to put in the comment section, uh, uh, hey, uh, you know, at that time, a Muslim caller called, it, then it's easy for the people to rewatch the debate, right? Because when you have a three hour debate, you do, maybe don't know when the Muslim called. So at least do something. Don't be lazy Christians, right? Help us. I cannot do everything on my own. Help Christian Prince too, help David Wood too, right guys? Download our videos, do what you have to do. Do we have any uh, Muslim guys, maybe a caller? Maybe a Christian wants to call because it seems that the Muslims are stuffing their faces with food. They are feasting, right? At the moment, maybe. Do we have any callers? Okay, we have a caller. I think it's a Christian. Let me ask this. Hello, you're live on air. Oh, I lost him. Okay, let me call him back. Hmm. Call me back, my friend. Call me back. You're not answering. Okay. Any other calls? <clears throat> uh, Ludwig Chester is saying remind me of CP style well uh, Ludwig Chester I've, I've been asked this question many times or a question why is your style of teaching debating why is it so close to, to Christian Prince well my friend maybe you don't know our background we come from Paul Tok era the Christians there, the Arabic-speaking Christians who debate there, they all share the same, same aggressive style of debating Muslims, teaching. All of them, you, you have no idea. Go, if you go to the Arabic section there, you will see Christian Prince number one, Christian Prince number two. It's just that these people maybe don't have a YouTube channel, but the admins there who run those rooms, there's a huge room. Right, maybe 300 people, 400 people. These admins, you don't want to mess with, man. Whenever a Muslim goes to that room, they will. They are the moment he start, he open his mouth, they start to barbecue with him. So maybe you know Christian Prince. You know, I know Christian Prince. He's a dear brother of ours. He's a living legend, right? But he's not the only one, guys. Right? So all the Arabic-speaking Christians are like like us. Just that you don't know that, right? Zakaria, have you never seen Zakaria Butros? Uh, you may, you maybe heard of the name Zakaria Butros. You never have seen him debate on Paul Talk. Bro, he's even more aggressive than I am. And he's a priest. Right? Right? So, yeah, we, we are speaking Christians. When we debate, we don't go easy on the Muslims, guys. Zakaria Butros is an Egyptian Coptic priest who debates Muslims. And now, you know, he stopped going to Potok because he started in Potok. Now he created his own TV station. He has his own TV station like Brother Rashid, right? The 60 million man, exactly. Muslims put 60 million on the head of Zakaria Butros, right? Zakaria Butros. 
If you catch him and you cut off his head as a Muslim, you will get 60 million from the Muslims. No, he's not an ex-Muslim. He's not an ex-Muslim. He's a Coptic Christian. Uh, really. He's a Coptic Christian. All right? Christian. Trinitarian Christian like you and me. Do we have any callers? <clears throat> Let me see. Oh, we have our sister Vanessa. Let me call sister Vanessa back, guys. Vanessa, can you call me? Whenever I try to call you, it's not working. Can you call me back, Vanessa? We have sister Vanessa who wants to call me. Hello, sister. How are you? Welcome. You're live on air. Uh, good, brother Rob. Hey, um Vanessa. How are you, sister? I hope you're okay. I'm good. I'm okay. I just want I remember when you were when you were reading about the aorta of Mohammed bin Kotov. Yeah. I remember him in one of the hadiths confessing himself yes. that he said uh, on on true things about Allah. I guess <laughs> yeah. it was apologizing there, something like that. Um uh who read it? I I, I don't know if it was a Christian prince who read that hadith. Do you that mean about the aorta, that his aorta is being cut off from the poison, that one? No, 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 he, he, he said himself in one yeah. of the hadiths yes. that he said all things about Allah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I remember that one, yeah. Someone read it, I don't know who read it, whether it was Christian uh, Prince or David Wood. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know the hadith that you're talking about. I don't have it in front of me. I don't, uh, to yeah. be honest with you, I don't have the link right right now to show it on the screen. But you're correct. Yeah, Muhammad said himself, I made false statements against Allah, right? He exactly. even confirms, Something he like even that. confirms uh, where it says, right? Uh, if That he yeah. that he was saying false sayings about Allah. And th that confirms yeah. that Allah is the one who cut off his aorta. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. You're right, sister. And you're right. You know, just to make people laugh, like according just to make them laugh, yeah. uh, Muslims always say, um, if uh, that their their Quran is 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 a miracle, otherwise <laughs> make something like that. Yeah. Uh, now Muslims, I want to tell you, somebody made something like that in <laughs> Morocco, or was it Egypt? One one uh, atheist girl yeah. wrote a verse, a surah, surah Corona. <laughs> <laughs> surah Corona. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about it, brother? Surah Corona. Um, no, I, I, I didn't. I didn't hear. Uh, no, I didn't see it before. Maybe we should play it once on time. Surah Corona. Oh, brother, that's a good one. I, I have. Heard, I've seen. I've seen Surah at Tafah, right? Surah at Tafah, which is yes. the Surah of the Apple, by a Sheikh. Yes. I think I have yes. the video. Maybe we can play it later. There's a. Yeah, sheikh, right. uh, he's talking about Surah at Tafah, right? Surah of the Apple. He created his own uh, surah, right? And it actually yeah. sounds like like the Quran. He's even reciting it the way, uh, you know, like the Quran. It's funny. You know, the girl is is very is a genius. She even yeah. dis she even uh, designed the page like yeah. a page the Quran. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. um, Act seventeen apologetics talked yeah. about it. Yeah. Then arrested in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. For insulting the Quran. Oh wrote, wait, yeah, yeah, I've seen, I've seen the video. Now, now I'm rem uh, remembering. David Wood put that one up, right? It was David exactly. Wood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Surah Corona, yeah, yeah, and and they wanted to kill her, right? Yeah, they arrested yeah. her already. She arrested Who her. Who knows yeah. if they have killed her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I they remember. have very, very, very thin skin. They come out and and attack yeah. the Christianity from all angles. Yeah, they get they. Give us another Jesus. Yeah, you see, mm -hmm. they, they 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 want to just just put our our, our Christianity upside down. Yes. But if you say something about them, yeah. they they arrest, they kill, they butcher. I don't mm -hmm. know where they are, that court is from. Definitely from the from, from hell. Yeah. So thank you, Father. God bless mm -hmm. you. No, uh, no. Yo, uh, this thank is every you. day. Thank I you. mean, even if it's the same like the other brother says, yeah. it's there is always more information. Yes. There is always more information in what you do. You, you do your own research, that, like in yeah. depth. 
I mean, yeah. Christian Prince has his own strength too. I love him too. Yeah. But you have your in-depth research. You Thank go, you, sister. Oh, Thank you. How, how would I have known about, about um, what's the name of John? John of... Um, um, Damaskin. Um, John Damascus. Damaskin. Yeah. 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 I never yeah. have heard about that uh, yeah. monk. Yeah. And I could yeah. never yeah. heard about the one you did yesterday. Yes. Yeah, you the, know, yeah, Ignatius, yeah, the, the church father of Ignatius who who was spanking yes. uh, heretical people, yeah. And John of Damascus, Ignatius, yeah. church father, yeah. right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yes, God bless you, brother. God bless you Let too, thank you for calling. Always amazing uh, blessing to, to have you on the call, sister. Keep calling us. I love thank you. you. Thank you, brother. We love bye you, bye sister. Bye-bye. Love, bye -bye. love, your, your, love your family too. Bye. God bless God, you. God bless you. Go with the peace of Christ. Bye-bye. Amen. Amen. Bye bye. Yeah, guys, let me <laughs> let me op uh, show you uh, the video that uh, you know that uh, let, let us have some fun. You know, small break. Where, you know, let us watch a small video to to see how Muslims actually step up and challenge Allah Himself. Right? They are challenging Allah because Allah says, "Bring if you if you think you can, you know, provide an ayah or a surah like this." Right? Okay. The Muslims themselves are stepping up to provide it. Watch, right? Let's see if we can show it to you. Just a second. Uh, let's see. Watch. أثار المنظر البارز في الفكر الوهابي بالسعودية محمد العريفي غضب أوساط علماء الدين المسلمين شيخ العريفي تسجيل مصور له يتهم الرسول الأكرم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله بأنه يريد قوارير نبيل. الخمر للصحراء كما دعا العريفي في حديثه لإحدى القنوات الإماراتية بأن الخمر ليست نجسة وأن الصحابة كانت أرجلهم ملطخة بالخمر وهم في طريقهم لأداء الصلاة في مسجد المدينة خلف رسول الله والصحيح والله تعالى أعلم أن الخمر نجاسته معنوية وذلك لأدلة منها أن أحد الصحابة جاء إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم براويتي خمر وكان الخمر عندهم قبل تحريمه مشروبا عاديا يعني مثل شرب العصير محمد himself was drinking خمر لكن ربما يهديه او يبيع فامر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم به فسكب فتح وسكب الارض ثم امره صلى الله عليه وسلم ان ينتفع بالجرتين ولم يامره بغسل الجرتين من اثار محمد كان نجسا لما جاز ان يخلط الماء بامر نجس Now guys he's going now watch هذه سوره التفاح هذه ذهب أحمد إلى السوق واشترى تفاحا ثم ركب الأتوبيس ثم رجع إلى شقته وضيع المفتاح ثم دخل إلى بيت جيرانهم ودخل إلى بيته وارتاح هذه سورة التفاح هذه سورة الأبل برادا الشيخ جاست You know, accepted the challenge of the Quran and he made his own surah, brother. It sounds like the Quran, brother. This is Quran, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Again. This is the Quran. ذهب أحمد إلى السوق واشترى تفاحا ثم ركب الأتوبيس ثم رجع إلى شقته وضيع المفتاح ثم دخل إلى بيت جيرانهم ودخل إلى بيته وارتاح هذه سورة التفاحة سورة التفاحة سورة chapter of the Quran of the Tufah I mean he just He just spanked Allah because Allah said, Pro, you know, make a surah. It's a challenge of the Quran. Make a surah like, uh, you know, one of the surahs of the Quran. Well, here you go. Muslims can do it. This is the link, guys, by the way. I uploaded this video a couple months ago. You know, it's an old video. But you see, even Muslims are spanking Allah. You see it? He's, a, he's still a Muslim. This guy's still a sheikh. Challenge busted, brother. You know, guys, this reminds me of uh, that TV show. Mythbusters, myth has just been busted of Allah's Quran. The Yellow Pages myth of Allah just been busted by this Sheikh. Sheikh Al-Arifi. Sheikh Al-Arifi. Right? Making fun of his Prophet and the Quran.
And Muhammad used to drink alcohol for three days and three nights. It, no, Nabid is wine. He was drinking Nabid more than you and me, more wine than you and me, guys. He was partying with, with, his, with the homeboys, right? Muhammad was partying with the homeboys, the Sahaba, for three days and three nights. Always the word, always three, yeah. Amelia, always three. <laughs> Challenge accepted and completed and myth of the Quran busting. By the Sheikh Arifi, brother. Surah al tufaha <laughs> The Surah of the Apple. Someone is saying, can I call in? Yes, of course you can. Go ahead, my friend. You can call us. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslims? What? No Muslims today. What's that, man? I think we'll take one call. And then uh, we'll wrap this up. Let's see if our brother Collegians wants to call us. And you know, if someone told me that maybe there are other live streams, so we want to give them also a chance. You know, we don't want to be a stump stumbling block for the rest of the warriors. I think our sister Hatun is also live. Yeah, Collegians, let me call you. I see that you called me. Can Hello, you hear brother. me? Yes, you're yes. live, my friend. Go ahead. I want. To, I I have to admit I've lost uh, like Vanessa call because my daughter cried. Um, no problem. But the topic today it's uh, free will in Islam, yeah. Yes, that's the topic of today. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pass the, this myth once and for all. <laughs> Go ahead. You know the hadith where um, Moses rebukes Adam for the yes, yes. forty years. Yes, we mentioned the hadith, uh, my friend, before. Second. Why, yeah. How come uh, if he misguides people, yeah. it, where is the free will in there? Because yeah. he, Allah chooses to misguide people, not the people choose to be misguided. Exactly, exactly. And we mentioned maybe some people who later joined. You know, it says here in the hadith, right? Uh, Adam, according to Muhammad, this is the Muhammad talking, right? The Prophet of Islam. Adam and Moses argued with, with each other, you know, and, and Moses saying, yeah, you are the one who turned us out of paradise. So uh, Moses is started to attacking Adam. Then if we continue reading, it says, Adam saying, do you blame me for action which Allah had written in my faith 40 years before my creation? So Adam confuted Moses. Adam confuted Muhammad always needs to repeat himself three so times. We can always rebuke Allah because we are not uh, guilty of any sin because he wrote it. Yeah, he wrote it. So <laughs> what free will? What free will, guys? Yeah, but this means we are sinless. Yeah, of course. We didn't want to commit. He made us. He made us. Not only that, <laughs> not only that, according to Allah, if you don't commit sin, Allah will remove you. Yeah. Allah will remove you and replace you with people who actually do commit sin. So Allah does not love righteous people. Allah loves only evil people. Allah loves evil people, man. Can you see it, guys? It's in front of you. Right? Allah's messenger is saying this. Not Rob Christian. Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, if you, Muslims, were not to commit sins, Allah would have swept you out of existence and would have replaced you by another people who commit sin. And based on the, that's in the Quran, I think, with um, Allah keep misguiding people, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't tell us how uh, they are picked. I mean, based on what? He choose to guide some and choose to be yeah. misguided. What is, yeah, what is, what is, uh, you know. What is the criterion? Yeah, what's the criteria exactly? Allahu so, Alam, brother. Why is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's a bad joke and then... It's, it's you, a lottery. You you take a ticket, maybe you win, maybe you lose. <laughs> kind of, yeah, kind of. It's a lottery of Allah himself. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. actually, I think you have better chance in lottery. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Uh, maybe you might win the lottery, then be lucky with Allah, the, the gamer. He's, you know, Allah sounds like a gamer, right? He plays with you, and you're, like, you're nothing but a puppet in his hand, exactly like the screen yes. that you see here. You know, he's playing with you, he's toying with you, and you know, when Allah is, does not like you anymore, he will remove you. And like the lady said, you know, we mentioned the lady today, uh, you know, Allah can decide someday that to remove the faith that you have in Islam from your heart. So he, Allah is the one who making you to become, 
become an apostate. And every Muslim, my friend, the, every Muslim is scared to death that Allah will decide to remove him out of Islam. What kind of religion is this? This is yes, crazy. Imagine being a Muslim for 70 years and in your last day of life, um, Allah decide to misguide you. <laughs> yeah. 40 years you do Ramadan, you do good deeds, you pay zakat, you help the poor and then poof, poof, Allah, Allah makes you lose Islam. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. Exactly. Yeah. Islam so, is gone, brother. It's, you know, you become apostate. Who did that? Exactly. Allah did that. Uh, and we can set a challenge like, uh, yeah. what is your, uh, uh, like, what's your, uh, on what do you base your um, um, salvation on? Like, why are you so sure? Like, yeah. you know? Exactly. Because but the trouble is, uh, we see, like in uh, your show, we invite them to yeah. bring arguments, but they exactly. don't go near people with knowledge. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah, they only listen to the imams and that's it. They don't investigate. They don't see if Rob Christian is lying. They don't go to the sources. No, exactly. what, my, what my imam says, that's it. I have to ask my, you know, how many exactly. times uh, have you seen Muslims when we debate them? You know what they say? Yeah, I don't know that. I have to go to my imam. My exactly. friend, can't you One do? Guy. Can't you ask Prophet Google? We are giving you, we are showing you the sources on the screen. We give you the numbers. We give you even the links. Yes. Right? I'm not going to the Bible to to to, to uh, read the Hadith. I'm not going to uh, 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 ChristianPrince.com or RobChristian.com or DavidDo.com. No, I go to Sunnah.com. I go to QuranWow.com. I go to Quran.com. I quote it. I read it as it is. And still, and you need to go ask your Imam. What's wrong with you? Can't you read yourself? As you can see, in sensitive topics, they never call in. Yeah. They, you can see they listen because sometimes they dislike mm. what they hear, probably, yes. but they never there to stand by their... Um, Damaging, huh? Yeah. yeah. So as you put uh, John 18, you know, you are of the son of the devil because you lie. Um, we can also set a challenge there because it's the hadith where it says you can lie to your wife, you can lie in a war. Yeah. And I, and my my point is who's left yeah what's left exactly who oh, you're not then they say in quran it's truthful and then you ask where is the truthful allah when he deceives people yeah no it's 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 just a, a contradiction all over the place but yeah. for some reason you cannot address them to to expose the top scholars because they never ring in because they know what it's all about yeah. So they stay away, yeah. and I encourage uh, Christian f uh, to to address to regular Muslims and go and ask them, because they will ask the Imam, you know. Yeah, it's always the Imam. Imam is doing business. Imam is driving a big Mercedes. You know, uh, he can he can fill his pockets because yeah. of such stupid Muslims who don't want to do their own is investigation first. I mean, yeah. my friend, you're a Christian. I'm a Christian. How many times have you tried to criticize Christianity to know if Christianity is the truth or not, right? Real Christians should investigate. Maybe the Bible is wrong. Read it. Yes. We, uh, my friend, I've been trying to find one mistake in the Bible. I could not. This is why I'm still a Christian. Yes, and uh, for example, this is precise the point, but if you go in Saudi Arabia, they call it still um, Jabala Mus or Mus Jabala. The, yeah. the God gave the Ten Commandments. Yeah. You're not allowed to go there. This is the proof that uh, not regular people, but uh, uh, Muslim clerics try to cover everything up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they yeah, destroy I, everything. I, I uploaded a video before of a sheikh, a sheikh who is actually confirming that 90% of the Muslim sources are hidden. They, the yes. Imams don't dare to talk about it because they know if they start to talk about these topics, Muslims will leave Islam left and right immediately like, you know, when Muhammad died himself, the prophet of Islam, when he died, immediately Muslims start to leave Islam left and right. Yes. As long as Muhammad was alive, they were scared to, death to leave Islam. Muhammad dies, starts to rot, yeah, <laughs> they bury him, they leave Islam. Then Abu Bakr comes in power and he starts the Ridda Wars, right? The apostate wars on them. And, and he, let, you know, he, want, he, he went to hunt them down, right? Hunt them down one by one. Let's get them back for a second, you and I would live in Saudi Arabia or any Islamic country which has in place Sharia law, yeah? The minute I say something evil, they'll cut your uh, your head off, yeah? You exactly. just get separated. Exactly. How um, How is that free will? Yeah. Well, what free will, yeah? 
yeah, what is the free will there? Mm. It's it's just insane um, how they cannot see through it, this mindset sometimes. Uh, I've made a video, by the way, of uh, of FC Dava from 2017 covering to 2020, three years period to see what they've learned. Yeah. It's just, um, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying. Try, try not to, uh, you know, investigate Islam and try not to laugh, you know. I understand why you are laughing, bro. I, you know, I, I sometimes, you know, when I teach about Islam, I try my best to not laugh uh, when I'm live. You know, sometimes I really can't hold myself, right? And imagine if I, when I'm investigating behind uh, the screen, right? When I'm not doing live shows, bro, I laugh my ass off when yes. <laughs> I read the Muslim sources and, and you know, now, when I prepare, to in prepare a the live show, you know? Uh, I'm gathering material. I want to make yeah. a video about uh, whatever they think they are 1.6 or 1.7 Muslim. They are all apostate because they say Jesus is the Messiah and actually the Messiah, it's expected to be God. Yeah. So just by saying Jesus is the Messiah, they are all apostates because they don't believe what they say, but yet they say it <laughs> unknowingly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's a, it's a disgusting cult, man. And to be honest with you, um, Islam is good for people who want to stay blind, stay deaf, and mute. You no, know, Islam and, is good for clarity the, for yeah. business. It's business, but you know, yeah. because of them, Islam is still alive. If if you remove all these uh, shuyukh, all these imams and ustaz, you know, Islam is gone. And, and especially the apostate, apostasy punishment, right? If Muslims are afraid, if you yeah. if they leave Islam, maybe their dad, maybe their uh, uncle, maybe their cousins will kill them. Exactly. So, and the, know, so the fear is big. Always the, the fear. So you see the word on the screen, guys? The fear is the problem in Islam. It's always the, been the fear. The funny part is that Ali Dawa made like three days ago a movie, which I, I, I keep because it give me material for like three years to speak about. Mm. It said that uh, they actually the Muslim are not allowed to attack other, mm. but uh, some say it's because of Dawa because the governments didn't allow people free will in religion. Yeah. And I want to make um, um, a video saying what's the point in Western countries where you can believe and you can say whatever you want. What's yeah. the point of Dawa here? Yeah. Not to mention, you know. Of course. So they, they just uh, hope in their um, lifetime probably to get like four blondie girls. I don't think yeah. it will happen. Well, they are doing dawah. You know why they're doing dawah? Da because they, are, they have no power. They have no, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, they have not the, the enough uh, uh, soldiers, you know, to do jihad. So only thing they can do is do dawah, lie and deceive. Yes, but the moment no. they, be, they, they overthrow the country, you know, they become the power, then it's different. No dawah, it's only cutting off heads. People who don't want to convert to Islam, you don't it, want to pay cheese, yeah, we kill you and we take your women as sex slaves. That's the, yeah, the, but the, of the trouble in this video, he says it plainly that they do dawah to gain soldiers. Yeah, exactly. Soldiers. Soldiers. Yeah, of course. Of course. So, um, gain as many jihadis as they can and brainwash them. Yes, yes, because yeah. otherwise they can't do much damage. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. I, this is, uh, I started uh, myself as well as others. To, do, to keep doing this, to bring awareness to the people and expose them Amen. and show Amen. the truth. If they uh, want to embrace the true good, if they don't want in judgment, they, they cannot say, I never heard or I never knew. Exactly, exactly. So God bless you for this wisdom, my friend. We just do what God Amen. told us. Amen. The rest, it's up to each individual yeah. to choose. Yeah, and we don't do this for ourselves. We do this for the glory of Jesus Christ, yeah. our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Exactly. We don't go to sinners to cut their heads. We don't no. go to God thief forbid. To no. do I don't know cut their fingertips or so on. <laughs> Crucify them, us. cut off their fingertips. I mean, I understand you want to kill someone, but according to the eye of the Quran, it's not enough to kill someone. You have to crucify them, right? You 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 can crucify them, or you can even cut their fingertips off. Man, it's not enough to kill them. Why crucify them and why cut off their fingertips? Come on, jihadis. Come on, man. Yes. You need to torture people too. Anyway, this yeah, is so sometimes um, I listen to you even if I don't call, but yeah. um, sometimes um, I do want to come in for a few minutes. No problem. Because, you know, if we start to chat, uh, we go from one to another because this is Islam, actually, you know, yeah, it's exactly. kind of connected in stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try not to laugh about the stupidity yes, of Islam. Then, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to sometimes to stay on the topic and also share something. Yeah. <laughs> so, I understand, brother. Yeah. All right. All right. 
Was, uh, nice to hear you again. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for calling. Stay safe. Thank you, you too. And God Appreciate bless it. all. Appreciate it for your call. God bless you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, guys, it is what it is. Uh, Amelia, thank you for the super chat. Muslims, she's saying, Muslims, why are you waiting to get virgins? Huris. Kawai ba'atraba. Right? According to the Quran, chapter 78. Big-breasted, swelling-breasted huris. Huris with swelling breasts. Kawai ba'atraba. Why do you want the, the huris, your virgins, that uh, no one touched their hymens? Allah is saying in the Quran, right? There are hymens. Exactly. More likely melting bodies with fire. Allah is no one else than Satan. Wake up, Muslims. Thank you for the super chat. Exactly. Chapter 78. An Naba. Ayah 33. And maidens, huris, with swelling breast. Million, million, melon breast, brother. Pow! Right? Weapons of mass destruction, brother. Swelling breast like of age, brother. Kawai ba traba, wa kawai ba traba, brother. Huris with big swelling breasts, brother. You see the swelling? I mean, come on, man. They must be big, man. Big melon. If they are not big enough, man, you know, you know, everything must, you know, everything is big in Islam, brother. I mean, if. Uh, I mean, I mean, if this is not Satan, then I don't know what, what the meaning of Satan is, guys. If Allah is not Satan who is trying, right, who is trying to get jihadis with promises like this, empty promises, I will give you women with big breasts, brother. Just fight for me. Become a terrorist for me. Boobzilla. Yeah. Right? And if we go to another ayah, uh, guys, chapter 55. Wait, let me give you this one first. The one that we just mentioned. Bookmark, save the links, guys. Chapter 55, Surah Ar-Rahman, ayah 56. In the midst of these shall be maidens, huris, with modest, restrained glances. Maidens whom no man or jinn has ever touched before. And the word is, Lam Even the you know it's you know this is false translation, guys. Allah is describing that no one touched what is inside the 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 vagina. The you know the hymen is not touched. Can you imagine? No one deflowered the hymen. The hymen of the Horis, guys. You know what hymen is, right? If you're sorry, guys, if using this word, I know it's disgusting. But if you're a woman, you understand what hymen e means, right? So no hymen is touched, neither by any man or any jinn. Wow. Allah, you need to be go so detailed. Allah, you really need to go inside. Describe what's inside the female part. Allah. 18 plus topic again, guys. Sorry. It is what it is, right? The Hur al brother. The hymen of the Hur al brother. Allah must tell you, for as a jihadi, if you become a jihadi for the sake of Allah, you fight for Allah, you will get a lot of hur al with swelling breasts, brother, big melons, beautiful, big eye huris, and he's even describing how the hymens are. They are untouched. The hymens are untouched, brother. This is, guys, any anyone in the chat who wants to follow such a, a god or say, I mean Satan? Exactly, Emilia. What type of God, God forbid that this is a God, this is no one else than Satan, describes the vagina of the woman. Yeah. Allah, why do you need to go and describe what's inside the vagina of the Huris? Yeah, exactly, Frauch. Frauch, God bless you, my friend. Frauch says in the chat, and they claim this garbage comes from a holy God. God forbid, this is an insult to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Islam is an insult, Muslims. Today, guys, we describe to you that you should not listen to Muhammad. You should not believe in Muhammad. Because Muhammad is nothing but a disgusting agent of Satan. And today we prove to you that there is no free will in Islam. Because how can you believe that this so-called God, Allah, can someday decide to misguide you 
guide you. I mean, why, why do you need then to do Ramadan, five prayers, good deeds? Why? What's the point? And we showed you the hadith where Muhammad himself saying that if you do not sin, Allah will replace you with people who do sin. So Allah likes evil men. Allah likes sinners. Allah likes evil. Allah is the one who created evil. So Muslims, you really need to wake up. Use your brains. Don't put your salvation and trust in these liars, these deceivers called Imam, Ustaz or Shaykh. Wake up Muslims. Think for yourself here with me. We don't hate you when we quote your sources. We, because we love you, we show you the disgusting teaching of Muhammad. Wake up Muslims. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless you. If you want to support our ministry, you can support us through Patreon. Don't forget to also subscribe to our social media like Facebook. Destroy the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching guys. Muhammad is no one else but the agent of Satan, the prophet of Satan. Allah is no one else but Satan himself, the best of deceiver. The best deceiver, Satan himself. The father of all lies. Guys, thank you for watching. And Lord willing, we will see each other again in a future live show. Stay safe. Jesus is Lord. He is the King of Kings. The name above all names. And Muhammad is nothing but a scammer. He is the agent of Satan himself in disguise, i.e. Allah. Thanks for watching and God bless.